It's official, Mikhail Lewis is taking an Olympic redshirt year. Today we're talking about what the 165 pound weight class will look like next year, if Mikhail stands a chance to make the Olympic team, and Virginia Tech's lineup preview, plus so much more. So let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. <laughs> What's up wrestling fans, my name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling. If this is your first time here, this is the number one wrestling podcast on YouTube and we talk on this channel all about wrestling news, tips, and lifestyle. So without further ado, let's dive into today's show because there's so much to talk about. Now on this week's show, I'm trying out something a little bit different and I like to break down my videos each and every week just because it's a little bit more manageable. But for those of you who do watch this long form podcast, first of all, I appreciate your support every single week. I enjoy the conversations in the comments, but I'm adding another segment called In the World of Wrestling. That way we can just get off some of these topics that may not have so many stats and numbers and everything to dive into, but at least we can talk about those a little bit. So this week in the world of wrestling, first thing is the Pan American game. So the Pan Ams senior men's freestyle team went there, it, men's freestyle, women's freestyle, and Greco-Roman, they went there and won four out of six gold medals in senior men's freestyle, which is pretty darn phenomenal. Four out of six. So who were those four who won gold medals? Well, you have Dayton Fix, Jordan Burroughs, Kyle Snyder and Nick Wazowski, they all won gold medals, and that's really looking good for those weights at the World Championships in a couple of months. But let's not forget about those guys that won bronze medals, such as Jaden Ironman, who is filling in for Zane Rutherford because of his injury, as well as Pat Downey, who... You know, in some of these pictures, you may have seen him carrying a voodoo doll around. He's just going to be taking out his enemies back and forth all the way to the world championship. So it's exciting to see that. But it really, overall, I have to say that Team USA is looking good. And as far as men's freestyle, that was them. But I don't want to forget about the women's freestyle champs, who are Whitney Conder, Sarah Hildebrandt, Kayla Miracle, and Tamara uh, Mensa Stock. So listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know uh, as much about women's freestyle, and that's why I just sometimes I just don't feel comfortable talking about as much about it. I'd love to give them more support, and that's why, I, at least in this World of Wrestling uh, segment, I just want to give them a little bit of shout out because they deserve it for winning uh, the gold medals. Uh, overseas. And then also in Greco, Pat Smith won at 77 kilograms uh, at Pan Ams. Next up in the world of wrestling, let's talk a little bit about Junior World. So Junior Worlds is going on right now. The Junior World uh, Championships Freestyle uh, in Greco-Roman going on over in Estonia. And this week so far, there have been a couple of champions for the United States, uh, as well as a couple of place winners. So who are those? First of all, uh, Vito. He was the first uh, medalist for USA and he took silver at 57 kilograms he lost to Toshia Abe who uh, is from Japan I believe then next up we have David Carr taking gold uh, f he beat a guy from Japan and we also have Lucas Davidson taking silver, Mason Paris taking gold, Gabe Tag taking bronze, Trent Hidley taking bronze. And overall, USA took second place. So what's really great about some of these things is we get to see some of the some of these guys are already wrestling in college, but we also get to see some of the incoming talent and in some of these guys wrestling at the Junior World Championships. And these are still going on, and they will be still going on into next week. So look forward to over the weekend if you're not watching that. Uh, just like with everything, I have a link in the description with full results so you can follow along over the weekend. Next up in the world of wrestling, Kyle Dake versus Alex Deeringer. Uh, so Deeringer and Dake is finally happening this weekend. And listen, I'll be honest, like I talked a lot about this so far, so there's not much more to go into. Uh, but I will say this. So uh, my official take, just a quick take, is that I have to give the match, as I mentioned before, to Kyle Dake. I think he's going to make Team USA and represent Team USA overseas at the World Championships, but I do have to say Deeringer is going to win a match. That's just my take. You can watch live on Flow this Saturday. It's happening in Austin, Texas. And if you want to check out my full talk about this, I actually was on this weekend. I was interviewed by Takedown TV over at The Open Mat by Tony Hager, and it was an awesome opportunity to be on his show, on his podcast, on the website, The Open Mat, I talked all about 
what my actually my personal wrestling stories are talked a little about fanco wrestling you guys in the audience about fanco wrestling i talked about cal dake versus alex during the match my full take on that and you can go check that out i link it in the description below uh but just so you guys can check that out and the last thing in the world of wrestling this week is yanni d versus zane rutherford so this has been going on for it seems like forever and the arbitration has been going on and i'm really not sure at the time of this filming i'm really not sure when we're going to get the full results as to whether we're going to get a match three now so far listen we have updates i guess a little bit the the these lawyers this court I, I'm trying to understand it all just like you. Uh, they're looking at past wrestling matches and they're looking about uh, talking a little bit about the reasonable time to throw the brick. Should Kale have waited a little bit longer? Should the refs have reviewed the match sooner? And I mean, you guys know all that controversy, but you know, what, what do you think is going on? Do you think we're going to get a match three? Personally, I still don't think it's going to happen. Uh, right or wrong, I just don't see this happening. I don't even know when the heck this would take place. The perfect time for it to take place would have been this Saturday with Dig versus Deeringer, and then you could have had Yanni versus Zayn match three. That would have been a heck of an event, and I wish I could have seen it. And before we dive into the main topics of the day, I want to make sure I let you guys know that I actually just produced a bunch of new merchandise of t-shirts and uh, sweatshirts and crewnecks and actually a couple posters and stickers that you guys can check out on the Fanco Wrestling Store. Now, I have actually, uh, I want to let you guys know that are watching this right now because I know you are the biggest Fanco Wrestling fans, the biggest wrestling fans, and I have some really cool new gear so that you guys can sport at the local upcoming wrestling matches, at your high school wrestling matches, during practice, whatever it is, I uh, actually upgraded the pr uh, pre premium uh, cotton and soft, uh, not software, but the brand uh, of shirts so you guys can be sporting that and be feeling a little bit better than what was on the store before. So that's a little bit uh, into that. Now let's dive into the college wrestling news. The main topic of the day today is Makai Lewis. Makai Lewis of Virginia Tech, of course, he is the reigning, the returning national champion at 165 pounds. Well, Maybe he's not returning next year. That's because he is in. He's taking his Olympic red shirt next year. Makai Lewis kind of came onto the scene last year. I don't want to say out of nowhere. He was a previous world champ, uh, but he came onto the scene. Virginia Tech fans will not deny that he came out of nowhere, or will deny that he came out of nowhere. They say that like they knew he was going to win a national title and good for them good for them but this is what he had to say on instagram kyle lewis said i would like to take this time to announce my decision to use my olympic red shirt for the 2019 2020 season i didn't take this decision lightly after speaking with my coaches mentors and family i feel like i'm ready to jump into this olympic team and competing for team usa in tokyo will be difficult but i know that deep down i can get the job done Thank you for all your support. I'm looking forward to doing what I do for the Hokies in 2020-2021. Go Hokies. So that was his official statement. And, you know, it, it was kind of interesting to see where who these red shirts are coming out, who's actually going to redshirt next year, because we haven't really received a lot of clarification from these wrestlers. And understandable. I mean, they don't necessarily need to share it with the wrestling fans just yet the season's not underway a lot of them are still probably making their decision but we have a couple so far in Mikhail lewis in yanni in Jaden ironman but the one thing that i want to talk about is what are the chances that Mikhail makes an olympic team next year also what does the field look like at 165 pounds now talking about making the olympic team first okay so the, his chances of making an olympic team now if you didn't know, as I mentioned before, Makai is a junior world freestyle champ from 2018. He won at 74 kilos. Now, he was also an ACC champ last year, an NCAA champ. That doesn't really, you know, obviously that's folk style, not freestyle, but just adding a little bit more to his uh, present day, his recent resume. Now, if he decides to compete at 74 kilograms again, which if you're, if you're not familiar, and uh, let me know, I can talk a little bit more about Olympic weights, weights in an upcoming video, but there are six Olympic weights. One of those is 74 kilograms, and you may know who's at 74 kilograms now. 
in Jordan Burroughs, the reigning world champ, and he is going to be tough to beat. Uh, a reigning world medalist, he's going to be tough to beat because, um, I mean, listen, it's Jordan Burroughs. He's one of the top wrestlers in the entire world. He's a multiple-time world champ, uh, Olympic champ, Jordan Burroughs. Now, who else is there? Of course, you got Imar, you got Jason Nolf, and Kyle Dake, probably going to have to drop down from 79 kilos. Also, Alex Deeringer. So this is going to be a tough weight for Makai. But guess what? He's going to an Olympic training. Uh, he's going through Olympic training for 10 weeks before he competes in his first competition to try to make the Olympic squad. What are his chances that he makes it? Uh, I, I wouldn't count it out. Um, I think it's going to be very, very tough for anybody to beat Burroughs uh, to knock him off the team until Burroughs retires, which who knows when. Uh, it's just tough to beat that elite competition. And I mean, listen, I'm gave him a heck of a match at Final X, so I wouldn't put it past him. But Makai's young; he still has probably a couple Olympics under his uh, to go in the future. But it's going to be tough. It, just my personal opinion. Virginia Tech fans, please tell me I'm wrong. Tell me what your thoughts are. Now, as far as the weight at 165 pounds next year, now that Makai's out, now that the reigning champion's out, what's going to happen? So. Makai had a heck of a run at Nationals last year. He beat Evan Wick, Alex Marinelli, and then Vincenzo, he beat him in the finals. Vincenzo, of course, the two-time reigning national champion. And Makai came out there and he put it to him. And I got to say, it's going to be a tough wait next year. But I'll tell you one person who's probably a little bit happy is Vincenzo. Not saying Vincenzo couldn't beat him if, if Makai did wrestle, but Chenzo... Uh, is is looking for that third title? You know, three out of four, that ain't bad. There aren't many guys who've done that, so three out of four, not too bad. Now, as far as uh, other guys at 165, first of all, the only placer from last year who's gone is Chase Marsteller from last year. The other guys you have, uh, of course, Vincenzo took second. Evan Wick took fourth. Isaiah White from Nebraska, he took fifth. Josh Shields took sixth of Arizona State. Marinelli took seventh. And Bryce Steyart of UNI took eighth. You also have Logan Massa of Michigan. Uh, all these guys are going to pose a real threat for that title. As well as outside contenders. You know, those are just a lot of those guys who were the top tier last year. But just like Makai this year, don't put it out, don't put it past someone to sneak out of nowhere and look for that title the other thing i want to talk discuss is whether this hurts or helps uh, a couple teams in the team race so iowa i think is the biggest question here the biggest title contender i think especially at this weight it's just going to help them why well as far as iowa is concerned you know of course you got alex marinelli at 165 who has been a title contender for the past couple of years, and then you have Vincenzo. With Mikai out of there, okay, that just gives Marinelli another top placing spot. Now, Marinelli, unfortunately, didn't have the most... He didn't have the NCAA tournament he wanted to have, okay? He came into the tournament undefeated, had a couple losses. It was unfortunate. But this year, his senior year, you darn bet he's going for that title, and you darn bet I was going for that title. And the other thing is, Okay, some people may be saying, well, what about Vincenzo? What about Vincenzo? Alex Marinelli has never lost to Vincenzo. He's one of the few people that Vincenzo has lost to and hasn't avenged that loss. So a cu one of those people is Imar. One of the only people Vincenzo's lost to multiple times is Imar and Marinelli. He has a, Vincenzo has a couple other losses, but... It's just going to be really interesting to see what happens next year. Who do you think is going to win the national tournament at 165 pounds? And also, I want to know, will Makai make an Olympic team next year? Will he beat Burroughs? Now, diving into the next topic, there are two lineup previews this week. Because I asked you, all my fans, I asked you fans, wrestling fans, on my YouTube community tab, what lineup change what line of previews do you want to see next and the overwhelming response was michigan and there were a couple comments uh down below which i promise i will get to those lineup previews but i said you know what 
with the Mikhail Lewis announcement this week, why not get into the Virginia Tech lineup as well? So we have two lineup previews coming to you guys. Get ready for it. Let's get right into it. Virginia Tech lineup preview. So Virginia Tech, they have four out of the top 100 recruits in the class of 2019. They are looking pretty darn solid. They have one guy who is in the top 15, which we'll get to in a little bit, and they're tied for the most in the with the the most recruits in the ACC and uh, with NC State. What else? Well, they qualified nine guys for nationals last year, and they were second at ACCs beside behind NC State. That is Virginia Tech. They took 11th at nationals. They were just a point behind Nebraska. So they were just a point off of that top 10 finish, which would have been great. They have one returning All-American to the lineup. Now that Mikhail Lewis is taking that Olympic red shirt year, that's definitely going to have an effect on Virginia Tech. Now they were, they were the six most returning points as far as every single team, six most returning, but now they go back to that like 20s in the 20 spot because Mikhail is out and he scored 22 points for the Hokies. Let's talk about 125 pounds. Three guys here at 125 pounds. Joey Prada, who is a red shirt junior. Prada was third at, took third at ACC's. He was 15 and 13. The other guy you have is Corbin Myers. Myers, it was his first season at Virginia Tech last year from Edinburgh. He was third at ACC's. Now you're wondering, okay, well, What's the deal with this? Well, Myers is dropping down a weight this year. He's projected to drop down a weight to 125 pounds this year. He was number, uh, he was actually uh, number two in the ACC. He's ranked third, or he's number two ranked in the ACC. Excuse my mouth. Ranked number two in the ACC by Flow Wrestling. Make sure you check out the four rankings on flowwrestling.com. He's ranked behind Jack Mueller. He's a three-time national qualifier. Edinburgh and Virginia Tech. He's 20 and 10 last year with a big win. Uh, one of his big wins last year, Myers' big wins, is over Mickey Phillippe at 133 pounds. And Phillippe, you know, that 133 pound weight class last year was absolutely insane with all the guys that won and lost to each other. And Myers was one of those guys who was definitely playing a key in that. The other guy you have in the lineup is Sam Latona, who's a true freshman. He's a number 41 recruit overall and number two at 125 pounds. He is from Alabama. Now, who is going to make it 125 pounds? I have to give it to Corbin Myers. You know, looking for that fourth national uh, qualification in his years of wrestling, I think Myers has got this spot at 125, going into 133. Of course, you could have Myers possibly bump up. Um, I really don't know why. I, I really am not sure why he would, why he wouldn't. He's wrestled 133 the last couple of years, um, but... You, I mean, you could see that happen. You could see maybe the weight's a little bit too difficult to make, 125, so he, he bumps back up. You never know. Uh, so also you have Josh Bayer, who's a sophomore, uh, who's you know he's a tough wrestler for the Hokies. And then you also have Colin Girardi, who's a red shirt freshman. Now Girardi is ranked number two in the ACC right now behind Mickey Phillippe, who I just mentioned Myers beat. Girardi is 16-6. During his redshirt year, he went to the uh, Southern Scuffle and he went into sudden victory with Roman Bravo Young. I believe he ended up losing that, but he went into sudden victory with him and he ended up taking seventh at the Scuffle. So I think because Myers is down at 125, I think Colin Girardi has to be at 133 for the Hokies. At 141, another three guys, Mitch Moore, uh, he, he's the main guy, he's the returning Hokie for this lineup, and he is ranked second in the ACC right now by Flow Wrestling. He took second at ACC's last year. Um, he's ranked behind Tariq Wilson, who's 18-9 and nine last year, with wins over Josh Feinsilver and Sam Crevis. Those are two of his very big wins. Who else is here? We have Caden Darber, who's a senior. He was 9-4 and four last year, wrestling a couple opens, got a couple of good wins there. And another guy who got a couple wins at Cliff Keen Las Vegas was 11 and 4 or 14-11 and 11, was Dom Latona, who is another senior. But I really think that Mitch Moore is going to end up making the lineup here for the Hokies at 141 pounds. At 149, 
you have a guy who graduated last year in Ryan Blees who took fourth at ACC so he's going to be somebody who is missed but you do have coming in uh, Brent Moore who is actually the brother to Mitch Moore uh, at 141 pounds. Brent Moore is a redshirt junior. He's number two in the ACC behind uh, national or All-American Austin O'Connor from UNC. He was injured last year, so that kind of hurt him a little bit. And but he was a qualifier back in 2018. The other guy at this weight is Jake Hart, who's a redshirt freshman. So he's coming in this year trying to make that squad. Uh, he was 12 and 9 last year with a couple of open wins, wrestled a couple of tournaments here and there. But Brent Moore I have at 149 pounds at 157. Two true freshmen, two true freshmen who are going to be very tough. First of all is Dan Mancini, true freshman uh, out of Pennsylvania. He was number 14 in the country at 152 pounds. He number 99 recruit in the class of 2019 from Owen J. Roberts. He's a one-time state champ with 145 wins in high school in PA no less. The other true freshman coming in is Bryce Andonian, who is a Ohio Ironman placer at Powerade Champ from St. Ed's, a multiple times state champion. He's number 28 recruit and number seven at his weight class at 145 pounds. And so they're both obviously going to be tough in the wrestle offs. But the other guy you have is BC, uh, BC LaProd, who is a redshirt junior. Third in the ACC, took third last year. He's ranked behind Taylor Bramani in Hydley at 157 those are going to be two tough guys to beat i don't know if, if he can do it maybe he can maybe he can't we'll see in the upcoming season it just makes for good wrestling but last year leprod had a his best win was probably over quincy monday from princeton who's a top ranked guy in the country and that's why i have leprod making the squad at 157 pounds at 165 now this is of course the biggest weight of contention the biggest talk of the week and of Virginia Tech because Lewis is out. Makai Lewis is out. He announced he's taking his Olympic redshirt year. So what's going to happen? Where? Who's going to take over now at 165 pounds? Now that Virginia Tech's national champion isn't there anymore. Uh, so that is a very, very big loss. There's no way of skirting around that. Uh, but at this weight, I'll be honest, it's very loaded. And it's very loaded with a lot of young, young guys. A couple of those guys... Um, Dan Mancini, who I just mentioned at the previous weight. You have Connor Brady, true freshman. Eric Hansen, a sophomore. You have Scott Christian, a redshirt freshman. So it's pretty loaded with a lot of guys. Uh, the guy that I really want to get into is Connor Brady. He's the number 13 recruit overall in the class of 2019. So he's, he's really Virginia Tech's best recruit out of that class. He was number 5 at 165 pounds at that weight class in high school from Olentegi Liberty. Ohio. He's a two-time runner-up, uh, one of the only top 25 recruits not to ever win a state title, but he was a two-time state finalist, two-time state runner-up, two-time state finalist, an Ironman winner, and a Super 32 champion. Now, I think that you know another possibility at this weight class at 165 is David McFadden drops down. He had wrestled 165 in the past. Because he wrestled 74 last year and is kind of up a weight, I doubt that it'll drop you could see it but I doubt that that's why I have to say that Brady uh, is going to come in as a true freshman uh, I don't know if he'll come in right away during the season maybe he'll wait a little bit maybe wait until like January wait until scuffle maybe that's when he'll pull his red shirt but I, I see him probably making that lineup at 165 at 174 the guy that I just mentioned David McFadden is returning starter for the Hokies he took he's also one of the returning All-Americans the only returning All-American uh, unfortunately because of Makai out of the lineup he took fifth at Nationals last year in one ACC now he is ranked number one in the ACC right now he's ranked ahead of Daniel uh, Bullard of NC State who I think that he can beat and looks to pose a real threat at nationals last year as a top uh, contender at 174 uh, you also have cody hughes at uh, who's a red shirt so senior and jordan florence who's a red shirt freshman uh so both of those guys looking to beat out mcfadden for that main spot but i gotta give it to mcfadden as 174 pounder at 184 
three guys here that you have uh, because Zach Zavatsky was a uh, he took an eighth at Nationals last year. He wasn't All-American last year, but he's unfortunately no longer in the lineup for the Hokies. So you have three guys coming in. Brooks Wilding, who's a senior. He's been with the, with Virginia Tech for quite a while. Uh, D'Angelo DeWitt, who's a redshirt freshman incoming. Uh, last year, he was 7-5. and five. And the other guy you have is Hunter Bowen, a redshirt sophomore. Now, right now, he is the guy ranked in the ACC. Uh, right now, he's ranked number two overall behind Nino Bonacorsi. He wrestled his true freshman year. Uh, he was 2018 qualifier, so he actually took his red shirt year last year, wrestler's true freshman year. Uh, he was a Hokie Open champ. He was 12-1 and one last year, and he had one loss, and that was at the Southern Scuffle. The only loss was to Shakur Rashid of Penn State. So really, that's showing a lot. He has a win over Louis Deprez, uh, Binghamton, and Chip Ness, All-American Chip Ness, who uh was really like upset city last year at nationals and so the fact that Bolin has a win over him really uh, makes me feel like he's going to be a strong starter for uh, the Hokies and you know looking for that maybe skirting around that all-american status maybe he doesn't get it this year in the future uh, but I, I think he's going to be a threat to look out for him. Uh, mark my words there at 197 Cody Howard is a redshirt freshman coming in. Uh, he's ranked number five in the ACC. Now, he is the lowest ranked in the ACC right now of the Hokies. However, you know, preseason rankings don't really mean nothing, especially when you're a redshirt freshman. You haven't really wrestled anybody yet. Now, he's 92 last year, and uh, he still has some wins under his belt, uh, or some some matches under his belt, and Renan, Aiello, and Stout wrestled them a little bit last year. Uh, you know, he has wins and losses, but... Just to talk a little bit about that. And then you have Stanley Smelter, a sophomore. Now, I think that I have to give this spot to Cody Howard at 197. And please, Hokie Wrestling fans, Virginia Tech Wrestling fans, let me know in the comments below. You know, you guys knew so much about Makai Lewis last year when everybody else was really overlooking him. What's the deal? Let me know in the comments below. Am I overlooking somebody this year again? Please let me know. At 285 pounds, two guys here. Uh, because Billy Miller, who was the starter last year, he's, I was about to say retired, he graduated. Uh, he took third in the ACC last year. Trent Raglan is a redshirt freshman, rested a couple opens. But the guy who is probably going to make the lineup is John Borst, a sophomore. Now, he's number two in the ACC right now behind Demetrius Thomas of Pitt, who is ranked number one right now in the ACC. He was 12-10 and 10 last year. He wrestled Nick and Seth Nevels, Demetrius Thomas, and Stevenson. Now, while he wrestled all those guys and he lost to them all, at least he got some of those wins or some of the some of that competition under his belt. So I think that's really going to help him. And make sure you check out these other lineups just so that you know you know what's going on. If you haven't yet, check out these other lineup previews because there's a lot going on. But make sure you know watching this podcast right now i'm not done with the line of previews i still have one more line of preview to go and a couple of other topics to talk about today the other lineup preview today is michigan michigan was the most requested lineup preview by fanco wrestling fans and let's without further ado dive into the michigan lineup preview another big 10 lineup which i'm pretty excited to see who do they have where are they going to stack up next year in that NCAA tournament? So they have two returning All-Americans, six returning qualifiers. Two of their guys, two of their qualifiers are graduated. They're no longer in the lineup. We'll get to that in a bit. They took a fifth at Nationals last year. They were right behind Iowa, but a top five finish, that's not bad for Michigan. They're ranked right now number three in the Big Ten uh, by Flow Wrestling in the preseason rankings. Of course, they're ranked behind Iowa and Penn State. So really taking a little bit of a jump. And after looking at this lineup, you'll see why they're taking a jump. I think Michigan's looking really, really strong. In the class of 2019, uh, they have two top 100 recruits. And really, those two are actually more in the top 40. So two very strong guys just adding to the depth. At 125 pounds, we're going to get right into this and roll right through. Three guys here. Austin Assad, who went 8-4 and four last year uh, during his season. He is a senior. You have Kurt McHenry, who's a true 
freshman coming in. He is the one of the highest recruits for Michigan, the number 27 recruit from St. Paul's, Maryland. He's unranked at his weight class. However, he was a cadet national uh, champion, world champion. Uh, now, it's possible that he takes an Olympic redshirt year next year. Uh, you could see that happen just because um, this weight is pretty loaded. You have Drew Matten, who's a returner. A returning starter who is a junior for Michigan. He's number four in the Big Ten right now, uh, behind Spencer Lee and Rivera and Foley. That those rankings, of course, are by Flow Wrestling. Make sure you check out those rankings if you've not on Flow Wrestling, uh, just so you know all about that. Now you've seventh. He took seventh last year at Big Ten, so he's really he's got to step up his game this year if he wants to help Michigan uh, look for. A Big Ten title or a national title. It's it's possible, but he, he's one of those guys that has to step it up. He was 21 and 9. He had wins, his biggest wins are over Travis Petrosky and Zeke Moisey, which are two big wins nonetheless, but he has to step up his game. But be, And I think that he, Matten, is going to start at 125 pounds. At 133, another pretty loaded, this is actually probably the most loaded weight for Michigan, uh, you have a couple guys, Noah Coomer, a freshman, Cole Matten, a freshman, Nick Freeman, a redshirt freshman, and Joey Silva, a redshirt freshman. And of course, you know, this is a load of weight, but it's also a load of weight with a lot of young guys, a lot of young talent who are going to be competing against each other to make that lineup for the next couple of years. Now, I'll get to Joey Silva in just a bit because I don't think he's going to be the starter at this weight. While he was 7-1 and one last year, he was injured going into Midlands, but I that was last season. I don't think he's going to make the weight. And if you know anything about Michigan, you know that's because Stefan Micic is, was a starter last year and was a national title contender last year and is again this year. So listen, Stefan Meaches is going to make this weight a 133. He's going to be the starter. Right now he's ranked number three in the Big Ten behind Nick Suriano. Uh, and he's going to be tough to beat with Suriano, with Gross, with Pletcher, with DeSanto. It's a load of weight just like last year. And then, listen, at the national tournament, you throw in a fix who may or may not be taking an Olympic redshirt year. Uh, it's it's just a load of weight. You throw in a Philippi. It's it's going to be a lot of tough guys to beat at 133 pounds. Um, he was third at nationals. He's looking for his fourth All-American. Could he Olympic redshirt? Uh, possible. Very possible. Um but I think Michich is he's got this weight locked. Now, at 141, three guys here. The one guy I mentioned before was Joey Silva, a redshirt freshman coming in. Uh, he was from Lake Highland, Florida, a five-time Florida state champion. And he was a five-time Florida state champion at five separate weight classes. That's pretty darn cool, Joey Silva. Uh, now, th- one of these crazy matches, I love looking back at a lot of these guys' high school matches to see what they wrestled. Silva had a crazy match. In the Ironman Files against Real Woods back in 2017. And these two guys were going at it. It was an intense match, crazy match. The coaches ended up getting into a fight. Not a fist fight, but they were screaming in each other's face. Like, unlike anything I've ever seen uh, in a wrestling match or at Ironman, to say that, at one of the toughest tournaments in the country. Uh, Silva ended up winning that and ended up you know, going on later that year to win his state title. Now he is currently number ten in the Big Ten. Uh, he has he's behind you know Nick Lee, Mitch McKee, Max Murin, Mike Carr. It's a very loaded weight coming in as a freshman. It's going to be tough to you know get those be ranked high, especially when he was out after Midlands. Uh, even though he was having a solid season before that, but that is Joey Silva. You also have Ben Freeman, a sophomore coming in. Uh, he was eleven and seven last year, and he is somebody not to overlook. Even though you, you may not know his name, but he's not somebody to overlook because he had a win over Dom Demas last year, uh, a sudden victory win at the Michigan State Open. And Demas is not somebody to overlook either. You know, he's a very, very tough guy. Now, the other guy at one forty one is Keenan Store. Keenan Store uh, is. Number He took five, fifth of the Big Tens last year, but I want to save him for just a minute because I think Joey Silva is going to get 141. He's going to get that weight class. And I think Kanan Soar, uh, Store, sorry, Store is going to wrestle at 149 most likely. Now, he's moving up a weight from 141 last year. He was number three at 
he's ranked number three at 149 at big tens last year he took fifth behind lugo and sasso is where he falls in the ranking so it's his, those guys are going to be uh some tough guys for him to uh beat in the upcoming season but that's who he has he's 26 and 8 last year with wins over tristan moron or moran <laughs> I can't talk to you. Tristan Moran of Wisconsin and Chad Red of Nebraska. He took third at Cliff Keen Las Vegas. So a tough guy at 149. You also have Ben Freeman, guy I just mentioned at 149. I think Michigan, they just have a lot of depth and a lot of guys who can go up and down a weight just to make sure that you know Michigan doesn't have any gaps in the lineup. They they have somebody at every weight and they have depth at every weight. And that's what's nice about you know these big schools is they have that depth. Now the unfortunate part is at 149. Uh, Michigan's missing out because they're li- they're losing uh, Malik Amin, who is a placer at Big Tens last year, uh, and it's just going to be tough to lose him. Uh, now you also have Ben Lamantia, who's a senior coming in last year. He's five and four. Now I have to give this spot to Store. Uh, Kanan is going to probably make the spot at 149 and going to be looking for uh, you know All American status. Now 157. At 157, you have two guys here uh, taking over for Alec Pantelio. Of course, it's going to be a tough loss losing Pantelio, who's a national qualifier, All American, uh, Big Ten uh, placer. It's going to be tough to beat him. Now, first guy is Cam Amin, who is the highest, I believe, the highest recruit for Michigan, number 17 recruit, uh, and number two at 152 pounds in high school from DCC, Detroit Central Catholic. He is a three-time state champ from Michigan. He was 168 and 12, and he's second at Super 32. Of course, you may know Cam Amin uh, by the name. Amin, of course, his brothers also wrestled for Michigan. Malik graduated, uh, but Miles is back next year. The other guy this way is Will Luan, who's a redshirt freshman. Uh, so he took his redshirt year last year. He's ranked number seven in the Big Ten currently behind Caleb Young, Deacon, Berge, among some other guys. He was 92 last year. Uh, he actually, one of his wins was over Alec Pantelio at the Michigan State Open. So he won that tournament. And I think that has to look very strong for Michigan coming in this year to, you know, Lewin beat a guy who all American last year. So obviously he's going to be looking very good and i think he's going to take this weight and give cam a chance to redshirt at 165 tough weight uh logan massa and reese hughes reese hughes is a junior he was eight and six last year uh logan massa is number four in the big 10 he's behind uh Vincenzo Joseph, Alex Marinelli, and Evan Wick. Evan Wick's a guy who is returning next year. I actually thought that he had graduated, but he is coming back in fact. That's followed by Isaiah White, who is right behind Logan Massa. He was third at Big Ten last year, 23-7. and seven. Uh, He actually had a win over Isaiah White and Evan Wick, so it's definitely possible that he places you know high in the Big Tens and looking for that looking for that podium at nationals so i have to say uh massa makes that spot at 165 at 174 miles amin there's really no competition at this weight so miles amin gets that weight at 174 if you look to know a little bit about him let me tell you uh he was number he's ranked number two in the big 10 right now behind mark hall now what's kind of crazy for miles is last year he had he had more than two losses actually his record uh was 22 and 4 but his only losses were to Zahid and Mark Hall and he had multiple losses to those guys so that was common fortune he beat pretty much everybody else he had wins over Daniel Lewis Labriola Mitch Feinsilver he was a Cliff Keen Las Vegas champ but he just couldn't get over Zahid now Zahid is moving up a weight He's wrestling at 184, uh, but Mark Hall is still there, and you do have his brother down at 174. So you know, I'm interested to see where that falls. If Miles can, you know, take out his brother and look for maybe even taking out Mark Hall, uh, because you know you see these guys wrestle so often, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that he finally gets a win over Mark Hall at 184 pounds. Jelani Embry, who's a sophomore, and JT Coral, who's a sophomore. Now, Embry is a returning starter last year, and while he had a pretty good season, he was 12-7, and seven, he wins at Cliff Keen, Las Vegas. Uh, he took, He's actually ranked number seven in the Big Ten right now. He really 
didn't have a great Big Ten tournament last year, which is kind of upsetting for Michigan and as well as for Embry himself. Uh, but he's going to have to really pick it up a notch and step it up if he wants to help Michigan win a Big Ten title and a national title, which, like I said before, is not out of the realm of possibility. But Embry is going to get that spot at 184. He's just got to step up his game. At 197, you have three guys, uh, Bobby Stigro, uh, Jackson Stigro, and Andrew Davison. Now, the Stigros are Stigals are brothers, so that's kind of tough to be competing for the spot. But I think Jackson, Jackson's a little bit older. He's a senior, or is his brother. Uh, Bobby is a redshirt freshman. Now, Andrew Davison, this guy sandwiched in between them, is a sophomore. He was 10-3 last year and won the Cleveland State Open. So a tough guy going to be competing against Stig- Strigow, who is the returning starter. Strigow now was is ranked number 8 in the Big Ten uh, behind Colin Moore. You got Warner there. You got Mason Reinhardt. He was 13-10 and 10 last year. And he's just he's got to be looking for a spot on that podium at Big Tens and to help out Michigan at 197. And before I get to how I think Michigan will do overall as a team next year, let's talk about 284 or 285 pounds. And two guys, you have Zachary Nemec. Uh, last year, he wrestled a couple opens. But the big guy here is Mason Paris, who, of course, this recently won a junior world championship last year. He wrestled at the national tournament, qualified, didn't quite get to where he wanted to. You know, he had a tough match really close to the beginning of the tournament with Sam Stoll. Not an exciting match, to say the least. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, not not really an exciting match. Not really what I expect to see out of Mason Paris. I expect him to pick it up big time this year. Now, he did have a solid season. I'm not going to lie. A big, solid season. Um, but a couple of letdowns. A couple of letdowns. He was 33-9. and So he wrestled a lot of matches. Uh, a lot of matches. And I think a lot of this is because he lost early in the tournament and ended up wrestling back. Uh, also because I think just a lot of these Michigan guys, they have a tough schedule. Now, in a, a long schedule, he took seventh at Big Tens last year, and he lost in the blood round at Nationals. So it's not like he was, you know, not not putting out, not really doing a great job, because he was. He was doing a good job. He just needs to take that over his next step. He has wins over Thomas Haynes of Lockhaven, uh, of Matt Stencil of Central Michigan, of Amar Desi of Oregon State, Yusef uh, Himna of Maryland. And like I said, that crazy match was stole. Uh, although he lost, it was a pretty crazy match, and he could have won. So that is Michigan's lineup. But how will they do overall? Well, I think they're going to have a tough time competing with Iowa and Penn State. And by tough time, I mean like it's going to be some good matches uh, if they're on each other's schedule this year, which hopefully they are. Hopefully all these teams are wrestling this year. But I think that Michigan stands a shot at... I don't know necessarily about winning a national title as, as a team, but definitely are in the realm of winning a Big Ten title. Now, I think Iowa and Penn State, you know, we got to wait to see where a lot of these guys are, who's going to Olympic redshirt, what's going to happen. So that's that. And make sure if you haven't checked out the other wrestling lineup videos, you check out that whole playlist from Arizona State to Virginia Tech. They're all there. Make sure you check out all those lineups and the other College wrestling news this week. It's a little bit of a fun topic before we get into a little bit more of a uh, heated debate. A fun topic this week that we want to talk about in college wrestling is Anthony Ashnall breaking world records. Now, it was actually, it wasn't just Ashnall. It was with his friends, with his friends, uh, Del Vecchio and Heilman. You may know as All-Americans, all from South Plainfield High School in New Jersey. Now, they were setting out to break a record for the most hugs in one minute, in 60 seconds. 70. I will say, I looked a little bit into this, who the previous champions were, what the stats were on them, and if Ashnall and his friends actually succeeded in getting this world record. Now, for the rules of the most hugs in one minute. The rules for this record's uh, title state that the count as a genuine hug, both arms have to be wrapped around the other person in a close embrace. And it has to be done in a minute. And that's, that's really it. Those are the stats there to get done. Now the previous record holders, the record holders currently uh, are Krishna Kumar, who hugged 79 people in 60 seconds. He's from India. 
Satoru Shibata, who is the current reigning hugging champion, who hugged 87 people in Japan on 16th of June, 2019. Now there's a very hilarious video of, uh, it's actually, I believe, Kumar uh, hugging all these guys. He just, he he did a little bit differently where he actually gave out 79 individual hugs to 79 separate people, whereas Ashton and his friends did it to one person. I really don't know if there's that much of a difference as far as a hug. A hug's a hug. It, it, nowhere in those rules did it state that it had to be by a separate, to a separate person. Now, Ashnall, of course, Scott Del Vecchio and Troy Heilman, uh, all from the same high school. Uh, Ashnall, of course, is a national champion. He is a second national champion from Rutgers behind Nick Suriano, but I mean, same exact year this past year which was very exciting he's the first four-time undefeated state champion from new jersey so he's just a record breaker overall crushing records and this is just added another one to his belt uh del vecchio is an all-american he actually beat de santo in 2018 ended up graduating but he beat de santo to go on to all-american and then heilman was an all-american from unc uh last year and i i remember like how pumped he was to get uh, on that podium so it's very exciting to see that now watching this video on twitter that Ashnall and his friends posted uh Ashnall was coaching del vecchio and heilman were the ones doing the hugs they were giving the hugs to me it looked like a full embrace and i'll link to that video in the description below so you can check it out uh there was a full embrace they were hugging and they got 113 hugs now I don't know the rules necessarily with the Guinness Book of World Records nowadays if they actually have to be present or if there can be a video of it. I, I think they have to be present, but Guinness World Records, get to New Jersey right now, get these guys hugging, get them in the Guinness Book of World Records. A fun bit of wrestling news for you guys this week. I know uh, sometimes it gets a little bit heated, but sometimes we like to go into those very fun topics. The last topic of the day, the last topic of the day today is in high school wrestling news. California banned certain teams from competing and certain coaches are not too happy. Now, it's not necessarily uh, wild for California to ban certain things, as we've seen before, but this time they're maybe stepping a boundary as it goes into sports. So what's going on here? What did they ban? Why are they banning schools from competing? What's going on? So this is actually old news that has since resurfaced uh, back from 2018. And it's really because it's resurfacing because it's coming into into fruition during the 2019-2020 season. Now, it's from an article posted in the LA Times. I'll link to that article down in the description so you can read it. They are banning, during the 2019-2020 school year, California from the CIF, uh, the California Interscholastic Federation, is banning schools from playing schools around the country that don't compete in their state championship playoffs. So take that in for a second. I'll read that again. They're banning schools from playing schools or wrestling schools from around the country that don't compete in their own playoffs. So... If you're a team from California, you cannot now play against, or like in football, you can't now play against a team from Colorado or Pennsylvania or Idaho. And in football, maybe that's not that big of a deal because for the most part, you're playing teams within your state. But what about for wrestling? That's where we get into this. So... To be honest, there wasn't that much information on this, which I found very surprising. So I'm going to get into the information that I found that I had, and I want you to, you know, if you're a California wrestler, I want to hear your opinions on this because this is very big news, and maybe you have a little bit more inside information than I do. So currently, California competes against everybody in the state in their state championship. Everybody in the state is just one division. Just everybody goes in, and really, that makes for a heck of a tough state tournament now i think the thing that the thing that this article stated and the thing that california is looking out for is they really want to look at what playing high school sports means and what the ultimate goal and the morals behind that should be 
should high school sports be about winning or should they be about you know having a good time competing with your local teams okay listen i see i see both sides i see that maybe there's too much pressure on high school teams on high school kids to compete 100 percent get that however to ban others to ban schools from competing against other schools just because they're from a different state now i get i get allowing not allowing these teams to compete in the state tournament you know like in in pennsylvania i talked a little bit about in a separate video uh there are certain religious schools that are allowed to compete in the PIAA, even though they are technically allowed to like recruit, uh, but they're allowed to compete in the PIAA tournament. Now, if you're a prep school, you can't. You have to compete at national preps, like a Wyoming Seminary or a Blair, which we will get into those coaches, what they had to say. Now, the biggest thing that the board too is looked, looking for is they don't think it's fair. They don't think it's fair for these schools to compete against each other. Now, the biggest person who's really brought this back up is Coach Green at Wyoming Seminary, head coach at Wyoming Seminary. Uh, he's fully against this, fully against this. He put out a tweet storm uh, talking a little bit about this. I mean, not, nothing bad. He was just uh, putting out his opinion. He said this, Wyoming Seminary has been educating students since 1844. California became a state in 1850. The idea that the CIF would prohibit its athletes from competing against ours because they are concerned about our academic profile is a little bit difficult for me to grasp. The National Prep Tourney was first contested in 1935. It's older than the PIAA, which is the Pennsylvania State Tournament, older than the NYSPHSA, the New York State Tournament, older than nearly every state association championship. Preventing your athletes from competing against kids who compete in an event with such history and prestige seems very odd. And I'll be honest, I don't know exactly how many schools Wyoming Seminary is competing against in California, but like if a school in California wants to have a dual meet or dual match with Wyoming Seminary, why shouldn't they be allowed to? And that's what's interesting. I don't know how this flows over into wrestling. Are California schools, you know, they're not allowed to compete against other schools. Are they allowed to go to national tournaments or do they just have to stay in California? Can they only now compete at California tournaments, uh, you know, opens and things like that, or are they allowed to go to Ironman and BCD East and Powerade and Reno Tournament Champions, like which is the closest tournament to a lot of these kids, is Reno? Are they not allowed to compete against them now? I, I would have to say I would doubt it, but there hasn't been much clarification on it. And that's why I'd like to really know what the deal is with that. And I understand where uh, Coach Green's coming from was saying a lot of this, that you know, why should we not be allowed to compete against the school if we want to? Uh, they should be allowed. You're, you, a lot of these high schools are looking to wrestle the best teams in the country so they can see how they stack up against them. They can get that better competition. And really, so they can get recruited and, and see, you know, if there's a big match between Wyoming Seminary and a school from California, they should be allowed to wrestle. They should, that, to me, that's plain and simple. Maybe I'm looking into this wrong, but to me, that's how I interpret it, and that's how I saw things. We'll see how it turns out in the 2019-2020 uh, season. Uh, but to me, this is just absolutely crazy. It's, it could be bad for scholarship opportunities for these guys who can't com now compete in these tournaments. But like I said, please, if you're from California, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd like to have a big discussion about this and talk all about that. And that'll do it for the Fanco Wrestling Show this week. It was a long show, but very exciting show. Make sure, like I said, that you check out that uh, interview on Takedown TV over at the Open Mat. Make sure you check out the Fanco Wrestling merchandise store so you can support Fanco Wrestling. And it really helps uh, the show. It really helps me to keep producing these videos. And I really appreciate all you wrestling fans. I can't wait for uh, Alex Ehringer versus Kyle Dake this weekend. And until next time, I'm Josiah signing off. Yeah.